a piece of registered mail dated 1958. Postage, $2.44. Insurance, over $140. What was inside? What are we looking at here? We're looking at the wrapper that enclosed the box in which Harry Winston mailed the Hope Diamond to the Smithsonian Institution back in 1958. The Hope Diamond the most famous, some say infamous, gem on the earth. For centuries, treasured by royals and heiresses, and some say, beset by a curse. Neither rain nor sleet. Curse of the ages. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the mail must go through. Publicity was putty in Harry Winston's hands. He summoned a former policeman to curry the stone, wrapped in that paper, through the streets of New York, even through the subway, and then on to the post office. One of the things that always makes me chuckle is the marking on it. You can see right, right below the registered marking, you see one that says fragile. <laughs> Diamonds are the hardest substance probably in the universe, right? right. Oh, it's stamped but, on there twice. Yes. Three days later, it's picked up in Washington, D.C. by mailman James Todd, who delivered the jewel to the Postmaster General and the Secretary of the Smithsonian. So... Where's the Hope Diamond now? Well, today you can see what was inside this package at our sister museum, the National Museum of Natural History, up on the mall. We went to see it, the world's most famous rock. It took us by surprise. So that's it. That is the Hope Diamond. And we have taken out of the public vault the Hope Diamond for this morning just to give you a chance to take a closer look. I know I didn't really know what my reaction was going to be when I saw it. <laughs> and what was your reaction? It's a, it is an oh wow. It is an oh wow, yeah. It's the largest dark blue diamond ever found. Its history, perhaps even more fascinating than its facets. Smuggled from India to France, it became part of the French crown jewels. And remember what happened to Marie Antoinette? Pierre Cartier eventually snaps it up, and drumming up rumors of a curse, he drew the attention of American heiress Evelyn Walsh McLean selling the diamond to her in 1911. Wouldn't it not be safe to say that she was eccentric? She was a bit eccentric. And people talk about when they would go to her home that, you know, the Hope Diamond would be one that would be passed around for people to wear. Her dog might be wearing it for that evening. McLean's heirs sold it to Harry Winston, who, after touring it around the country, decided to donate it to the Smithsonian. He said, other countries, they have their crown jewels. Well, we don't have a king and queen, but we should have our crown jewels. And what better place than here in the nation's capital at the Smithsonian Institution? 45 carats and more than a billion years old. The blue color comes from the element boron, itself super rare. And lucky us, watch this. So now we're going to turn off the lights. Five, four, three, two, one, go. And you see there's an orange glow to the Hope Diamond. <laughs> what is that about? Okay, that's the boron again coming back at you. For people who like curses, the yeah. idea that it glows, this blood kind of red color is just even more wonderful. It right? makes it better. It makes it better. It really <laughs> yeah. Curator Jeffrey Post does not believe in the curse. But what of the postman, James Todd, who delivered the diamond to the Smithsonian? What happens to that guy? <laughs> well, according to the, the, the history, turns out that he delivers it, and then within the next year, he actually is in, a, in an accident, in a, in a traffic accident, and has a broken leg. And so, and, and his, house, well, his house burns down, that's true. <laughs> but then, you don't like this curse. Well, part. there are a lot of other people that have had long associations with this diamond right. that, you know, have had nothing but great success. Look at you. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking good for a guy who's 40 years old, right? <laughs> <laughs> Hope Diamond hasn't hurt me a bit. The Hope Diamond always draws a crowd, a must-see for millions of D.C. tourists. And yet, across town at the Postal Museum, the plain brown wrapper is just as valued. The Natural History Museum can have the diamond. I want the box it came in. I kind of think we got the better end of the deal. And needless to say, this was all shot pre-pandemic, and the Smithsonian and all those great museums are still closed to the public because of that. We can't wait until it's post-pandemic. We can go back and do a lot more exploring. 
Harry, you have told so many ride. amazing stories. This might be my favorite, though. <laughs> what do you think? Is the curse real? <laughs> well, OK, so this was what was so cool because they turn off the lights and they put on the ultraviolet light onto the diamond. And so carbon and boron are right next to each other in the periodic table. Boron, we think, comes from supernova explosions mm -hmm. from, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of millions of years ago. And what happens when the ultraviolet light hits those uh, atoms inside, those boron atoms inside, they just start dancing. That's where all that color comes from. It was a pretty cool experience. Yeah, I'd love say so. I love watching you geek out here. It's the best thing <laughs> at this time in the morning. That is so cool. And the box was cool, but I'd rather have the diamond. Out. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with I you. agree. A yes. billion years old. Wow. Uh, thank you, Harry. Great and story. great tree, by the Pleasure. way. Pleasure. Nice Christmas tree yeah, behind you. Yeah, nicely done. I know Andrea did. We do what we can. <laughs> Thanks, so nice. Harry.